Hello, everybody. I'm here to give you this talk, what we have been waiting for. Uh, pun is uh, made by JF, so uh, if you don't like it, tell him. So I'm Hannah. Probably you know me from my talks, but I'm a staff software engineer in Woven by Toyota. I'm co-chair of EWG and SG7. I'm also author of CTRE and CT hash. Oh, CT hash, and you can find me on uh, Twitter. And uh, this is my email address. I like it. It's, it's cool. Yes, yeah. And uh, warning in these talks, there are ligatures. Don't be scared. So it's not special character. It's just ligature. It's this code. It's awesome. So last year at CPP now, this year, I did a lightning talk. Uh, do you remember it? Who is like Raisia? Do you remember it? Yeah, you know each other. Marshall, you were there. Yes. But you didn't raise a hand. Sorry. <laughs> right. So last year at CPP now, I did lightning talk about uh, searching in C++. This search engine. It's uh, you can. It's online, and you can type some, anything, and it will search uh, yes. maybe C++ standard or C++ reference. Yes. It's a useful thing. By the way, do you know there is a Jurassic Park in C++ standard? Hmm? I'm just sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> ah. What's the URL for this? How do I get this? Uh, we, will, we will get to it. Okay. <laughs> So uh, and we will open the page, and Jurassic Park is somewhere on this page. And it's there, Jurassic Park. <laughs> and you can, you, you can search uh, for uh, words, uh, like documents in one, or like uh, multiple words, like Jurassic and dinosaur, or j and stop. And uh, you can look for phrases. You can define behavior, and it will give you all occurrences of this phrase. But this is not subject of this talk. Is so, there find behavior in C++? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay, and uh, but uh, this is I wrote this in uh, JavaScript. How many of you use JavaScript at least a few times? Okay. Because. Uh, when I broke, do something in JavaScript, it's really easy to do something. And I'm, I feel productive. I don't feel like limited by language, if I don't care about performance, obviously. So uh, for the search engine, uh, in uh, the uh, Lightning talk, I had a whole index in memory in browser. It takes a few minutes to load it, because it was a big engine. But for this uh, page, it's actually downloading only needed parts of the index. And I'm using fetch from JavaScript. And you can just fetch some page. You can fe uh, fetch some URL. You can fetch icon. And then you can do something. Uh, why it's not? And you need to await on it. And so, uh, it, it will do uh, both downloads in parallel next to each other. JavaScript is really si simple. Just await on the result. And it's kind of like a join. <coughs> Uh, for DT, but you need to mark uh, you need to do it in the function, and the function must be marked as asynchronous. Because in JavaScript, a model for coroutines is that you mark the function, and it will do transformation for you. In C++, is from inside out. In JavaScript, you have promise dot all, so you you can you have async function, you will download page by the URL, you will fetch its content, await on the content, store it somewhere, then you parse it. And uh, this function will give you a list of resources, like URL resources from it. And then you can uh, uh, use a function map to transform the URLs uh, into promises, store in the resources. And then you take all the promises and wrap them into one big promise and uh, wait for all everything to download. And then you uh, provide the content of the page and all the resources as an object together. It's just four lines of code. and it. Uh, it does nicely. You can read it. And even if you never did JavaScript, you probably understand what's happening. It does like this. It fetch pages. It awaits for the results. So meanwhile, it can do something else. Then it parses, fetch resources, wait for all of them to finish. And that's the function. Fork and join. 
I love JavaScript. <laughs> I, I had this is the right conference for that. <laughs> <laughs> and how many of you like at least like JavaScript? Like TypeScript? TypeScript is out. But uh, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. So I love also C++. And I want to be uh, same like productive at least in asynchronous code as in JavaScript. So uh, last year I decided I want to uh, learn Kubernetes properly. There's like a few libraries and every, every, every is a little bit different. So I decide I want to learn that, and I uh, I wanted to, to do, uh, use it same as in JavaScript in same way. So I uh, look what, what can I use to download stuff from internet? Libcurl, probably you know it. Probably you use it. It's 27 years old, <laughs> and it's proven. It's for, it's it works probably everywhere. It has nice and simple C API. It's kind of RII, but in C. It supports so many protocols, protocols including Internet Planetary File System. And it's used on two planets. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for those who don't do know how to use it, you create a handle, check if there was an error, return something as an error. This is just C. Set uh, the URL you want to download. You want to uh, also follow location if there is some uh, redirection. Then you do uh, the uh, download itself. It's blocking. And at the end, uh, you need to check if it's OK. And then you do the cleanup. And it's done. You just touch the resource, download it. Uh, in the in default mode, it will print standard output. But we'll get there. in C++, kind of C++, uh, C++ way, you need to. Uh, you can provide uh, something you will write into, and uh, some writer, which is just uh, pointed to lambda, and we will write into a string uh, because I need to pass it to voice star. It's not nice, and every time I write something, I will append to it. I don't care about performance here. It's just example, and then I return a number of members, and I will provide the uh, lambda itself, and then I provide uh, call the perform. Check for the error, throw exception if there is exception, if there is error, and return the output I just downloaded. I have simple synchronous fetch function. There's a question. Yeah, just remind me again what's the plus in front of the lambda. It's uh, uh, the plus before lambda is casting into pointer. Yeah, thank you. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's not obvious, but yeah. So uh, I wrote an AI wrapper for libcurl, as probably everyone. How many of you uh, write some AI wrapper for Corolla? OK, five-ish. So I have easy handle with constructor, constructor from URL, destructor. I can set uh, URL itself. I can follow location. Uh, I can write into some appendable container. I can uh, do since perform, and it will give me a result. It's just sim simplest possible wrapper for the C API. So fetch function will just create the handle, set the follow location, default is true, set the uh, output string uh, with helper function, so I don't need to write every time the lambda, do the sense perform, wait, uh, check for the error, throw the exception, return a result. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. OK, but I want to do it asynchronously. That's the point of this talk. So asynchronously. I need to write uh, to give a promise that there will be string. And I need to collaborate on the perform. It's not since perform, it's perform. And that's all. We can go. <laughs> Actually, no, uh, I need to do co return uh, in instead of return. I have uh, like opinion about it. Well, who hates co return? Yeah. Yeah. But at least something, we have something. But people don't use scrutiny <laughs> much. Like every time they tell me some reason, or like uh, maybe it's, we don't have standard library support yet. It's too complicated because there is so many customization points. And it's too new, C++ 20. It was released in Prague four years ago. <laughs> but still, people still are not using it. Not enough. So for me, 
if you look at the functions, they are just uh, like specialized coroutines. So coroutines are like a superset of <coughs> functions. Functions, they have one starting point and ending point. They can have multiple exit points. And they behave as a, a scope. So whatever you create inside, it will live only inside and uh, so like RII, as we are used to. So you have color, you will call function, it will return, you will call another function, it will return, you call it, and so on and so on. Coroutines, they have one start starting point and multiple entry points. You can re-enter them. They can be suspended, resumed. They can have multiple exit functions, same as function, or exit points as a function. And the lifetime of your coroutine is defined by, you, by your code in a library. So you can define how it will behave. Because uh, coroutines are just generic function, like generic function like something. So gen uh, generator, you will call it, it will immediately return, suspend, and then you, uh, every time you want a value from it, you will resume, and it will suspend, and you resume, it will suspend, resume, and suspend. Did you try to write your own generator? It's a nice exercise, you should do it, it's, it's fun actually. So uh, to be sure, like to make sure, coroutines are not threads. Some people are confusing these two. So if you have coroutine, some coroutine can get suspended. And it means that something else is running inside one thread. If you have uh, multiple, like if you have threading code and you are wait, uh, waiting for like, IO, the thread is blocked and you need to uh, jump into uh, work in other thread. So rest of the talk, we are talking about only one thread only. So in JavaScript, uh, you have function, and uh, asynchronous function look like, look like this. We have divide function, a by b. Yes, there is an error. I know. Uh, and if it's uh, if it's uh, b is zero, I will throw exception. Otherwise, I will do the calculation. On the left is normal function. On the right is asynchronous function, which returns promise for re result. But it's similar, it's same. In C plus plus. Can be same. We have divide function. We will check for the uh, for the zero. And uh, difference between function and coroutine is that return type is different. In this case, I'm saying it's a function returning int, and I will de uh, define the function how uh, like how it should work. And correct the result. So, oh, I'm quite fast. Uh, C++ coroutines must have at least one uh, co co-await, co-yield, or co-return in, in body of the function. If it's, there is no such trigger, such a keyword, it won't trigger the transformation into coroutine. So you need to use at least one. Even if it's a void coroutine, you need to co-return a uh, semicolon at the end. And uh, if a compiler sees one of the uh, keywords, it will look for promise uh, uh, for uh, coroutine traits for the return type of the uh, coroutine and its argument. And uh, by that, you will get a uh, promise type. And it will be a little bit confusing because in uh, JavaScript, there is a promise as a result of coroutine. And in C++, promise type is an uh, internal part of the coroutine frame. I will try to uh, make sure that it's, uh, we won't mix them up. So coroutine traits will take the return type argument. These are default one. Uh, check if there is the promise type inside of your type, and it provides the uh, promise type to you. Oh, sorry. You can implement your own uh, custom uh, like your own promise type for your types. So you don't need to have promise type inside of your type. It can be somewhere else. You can even uh, create promise type for someone else's type. And uh, it can work. So model of coroutine, how it looks like. It's a coroutine. There's like, oh, something, you, you, you heard probably you allocate something. Inside, there is a resum, resum point, like pointer to code, where you are going to resume. There is also a promise type, the uh, instance of the object from the coroutine traits you got, which contains everything you need to make your coroutine uh, work. Result, exception, or evader uh, on, on this coroutine itself. And there is also a coroutine frame 
in which all the variable, uh, variables which uh, can uh, survive a suspension point needs to be stored. A variables which doesn't need to uh, survive across the suspension point, they can be uh, put on stack. And uh, on stack, you have only like function t type, which connects only handle to the coroutine itself. So that it's kind of like pointer, uh, but managed by your type. So you can do RII, or you can uh, you can do like sh shared pointer or something. Oh, I moved. Sorry. And coroutine handle type in standard library looks like this. It's a coroutine handle of promised uh, type void, which is default. You can destroy it. Explicitly, it doesn't destroy itself as RII. You can uh, assume it if it's uh, suspended. You can check if it's done, so it reach a final suspension point. You can uh, <coughs> convert it into bool, which is same as done. You can access promise type if it's not void. Void uh, promise type uh, coroutine handle is kind of like handle, uh, like polymorphic handle for any coroutine you, uh, you can have. You can uh, actually get coroutine handle from promise itself, from promise type itself. So you can build it uh, back. You can uh, cast it into other in void star address. So you can actually pass it into C star uh, like a C API, and you can uh, get uh, coroutine handle from the address itself. Okay. Let's do our function, as I promised. So we have function, and inside there is the promise type. I will define it a little bit later. There is a handle type of coroutine handle promise type, and uh, we need to store it. So it's uh, it's of size uh, of pointer, and nothing else is inside of the handle for function. We build a function from the handle, and if, uh, if we reach uh, like end of lifetime, we will destroy it. We can also like sh supposed to like uh, write a move constructor, copy constructor, but doesn't matter here. And you can access the result with function get or explicit cast into the. So I need to jump a little bit into coroutine because uh, coroutines uh, like this is like uh, pseudo code how the assumption in coroutine works. It's kind of like lambda, which stores uh, uh, address of the first assumption point. And it, uh, when you start, you will just uh, jump into it and do some code. And when you reach suspension point, you will store the address of the next resumption point, and then uh, return and do some, uh, suspend and do something else. This is pseudo code. It's not like exactly how it looks like, but uh, mental model is really similar. <coughs> and then uh, when you get uh, like resumed, you will remember uh, you will do some code. Remember next suspension point, store it, and maybe it's just at the end and. That's all. So if you call and create a call coroutine, it will create the coroutine frame I showed you. And uh, it will it will go immediately into initial suspend. It will create the uh, coroutine uh, frame. It will create uh, the promise type inside. And uh, then it will call initial suspend. And initial suspend can decide what to do next based on its return type. It can suspend, or it can just continue, or it can jump somewhere else. So if you suspend, uh, and uh, if you return uh, void, it will go immediately to back to color. So someone who called your coroutine. If you uh, return coroutine handle, you can jump to another coroutine somewhere else. Or you can just uh, not suspend, and uh, it will just continue forward. And then there is a, another, like uh, in, in your coroutine, you can actually create your own suspension point. And, uh, if, and if you assume and you go back, then there is a suspension next suspension point. This is custom, your your own, and it's exactly the same. You you can go back back to out uh, out of the resume functions. Whoever resume you, you can jump somewhere else, or you can just continue past the suspension point. And then you will reach at the end. Edit. Someone else, someone else can also like uh, resume you, and then you will uh, reach final suspend point. Question? What is happening in between suspension points? That is your code. Okay. That is uh, your co code actually, uh, you are, like executing. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah. And when you reach final suspend point, which is at the end of your, uh, like past the end of your function, or if you call it a uh, return, uh, you have a decision uh, if you go what uh, 
to whoever, uh, whoever resume you, you can go jump somewhere else or you can continue not suspending and it will immediately destroy your uh, coroutine frame from its type and everything in it. And then it will go to whoever resume you. So you, you have multiple options. You can uh, dest uh, like destroy the coroutine frame at the end of your lifetime of the handle itself or you can uh, do it automatically at the end of coroutine. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. When you get to to the end of the coroutine, the final suspend, and it destroys the 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 coroutine handle too. If you do, if you don't suspend, mm -hmm. if you suspend, the uh, frame will still be there, mm -hmm. including promise type, and uh, it can be uh, like uh, it can be used from somewhere else. Like uh, if you maybe you refer. Uh, uh, reference like a return value because you usually store a return value inside of the promise type mm -hmm. or exception if you uh, go uh, if you don't suspend the final, final suspend point it will destroy the frame including your exception including your result or whatever you have there okay. so uh, yeah that's another question uh, if i have a routine that returns a void type mm -hmm. so immediately we initially so the caller falls Initial suspend comes back, and if the caller never resumes it, then it will be there, and it's your responsibility to uh, destroy it. Otherwise, it will leak. It's an allocated object. Oh, so so it's not automatically cleaned up. No, no. Uh, the coroutine handle dot destroy is your responsibility, and the coroutine handle is like pointer for you, and you need to uh, write your wrapper. Which will do the RII if you want, or you can have like uh, some like chat pointer or counting, or you can have like Arduino allocator, which will uh, destroy all the uh, coroutines at the end. It's up to you. You can also have like uh, allocator uh, for the premise for the frame itself, and it will allocate there, and maybe you don't care about it because you will never end, or because you can be in a loop and you will never reach the end of the coroutine because uh, coroutines are just. As I said, uh, kind of like more generic function-like thing. You can do whatever you want, and you can specialize, uh, specify behavior. But as you, as you can do a lot of stuff there. Okay. So coroutine has always initial suspend and final suspend, and every time you have co await in your code or co yield, there is a custom suspension suspension point. Co yield is just transformation into co await. Uh, I'm not going into it. Uh, it's in CPP reference, uh, but I don't need it in, in this talk. So, how uh, when you co-await on something, you reach uh, like uh, it created kind of uh, code like this. It will call only on the result of expression you are co-awaiting on. It will call function await ready, which must be there. And await ready a return bool. If it's true, then you don't need to suspend because it's already. Uh, the result is there, and you can just skip the suspension point and you can just continue. If it returns false, it will suspend and uh, store the uh, resumption point uh, to code just after that. And based on if uh, await suspend returns void, it will uh, suspend current cor coroutine and uh, return uh, to back to color of whoever assumed uh, current coroutine. If it returns bool, it's like one, one customization point. It can, it asks the function, and if, if if you return true from it, it will uh, return to color. If it, if you return false from here, it will continue. And if it uh, returns coroutine handle, it will just jump to every coroutine handle points to other coroutine or special coroutine like no op coroutine, and. Uh, when you get resumed or you just continue, you will call await resume function, and it, uh, the function will give you a result of the expression. So maybe you uh, await it on file you download. So something else will download it, and uh, when uh, the coroutine is uh, resumed, the await resume function can access it and give it to you. Okay. So uh, in standard, we have two defined uh, availables because they are really useful. 
suspend always, which will return false, which is it's not arbitrary, and it will always suspend and uh, uh, going to back to color. And I better assume uh, return void. And suspend never will never suspend because it's returning true. And so this uh, abit suspend function is not called, and await resume returns void. These are like bu building blocks for routines. So let's build the function. Uh, function has the premise type itself. And initial suspend for the function is I will never suspend. It, because you call function, you expect that it, it, will, it will immediately run. So you don't want to suspend. At the uh, end, it will suspend always because I want to store the result of the function to someone can actually get it. Then there is another function which is called as part of the construction of the premise type. It will uh, build the premise type and then it will call get return object. And uh, this function uh, provides the uh, handle type or whatever user actually sees. So this, uh, this type will return function from the current premise type. And then there is optional for the result. So you can actually store the result. There is an exception pointer for the exception. Yeah, I, I could do it like with uh, variant monostate, uh, the exception pointer, but it's, a, it's just light. There is a function return value. Every time you call, uh, every time you, uh, you call, uh, reach uh, call return point, the return value uh, function is called, and the value is stored inside of the promise type or somewhere else. But uh, this function will get, uh, get you a result, and you can do whatever you want. In, for function, I just store it. And whenever there is, there is an exception, which is not ca catched uh, inside of the coroutine, it will call another exception, and you can store it uh, as a part of the premise type, or you can uh, call stood abort, or <coughs> hold it, ignore it, whatever you want. So the handle type uh, was already there, function constructor, destructor, and uh, function get, which will make sure that uh, it's, uh, the handle must be done. So you cannot call it if it's not done. Then uh, you will reach into promise type through the handle and uh, check if there is an exception. If there is an exception, you will retrieve it. So it's like normal function. You will call it, and if there is an exception, it will just uh, like unroll on you. And if there is no exception, there, there should be a result. And we'll just accept the result and get the result out of the uh, function to the caller. And you can also access it like, by casting it. So we actually don't need dot .get. And this is just like coroutine as a, like a function as a coroutine. And uh, this uh, personally helped me a lot to understand the model, because I can change for a function later to give them more uh, functionality. So, Coroutine transformation, how your coroutine code transforms into like some a code uh, which actually describes how coroutine behaves. Let's have the function divide, which takes two arguments and return function int. There is a throw and there is a core return. First, uh, it will wrap in, uh, into object which represents the handle and, uh, uh, and create coroutine frame and copies uh, all your uh, arguments into the coroutine frame. Even if they're const. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm not aware, but probably yes. Yeah, even if they're const, it moves them. It's because really the lifetime fun. of the uh, coroutine <coughs> can uh, go past uh, of the like color, so probably because yeah. of that. So then uh, it will co-evade on initial suspend of your promise type. Then it will wrap uh, your code into try catch dot 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 and uh, call unhandled exception if there is an exception. And uh, it will change core return <coughs> with a uh, promise return value. Oh, it didn't go away, sorry. Uh, and at the end, it will go away on final suspend. And if you go past the final suspend, it will destroy coroutine frame. This is like the Kind of what's happening with coroutine if you like uh, compiler is doing it for you. Any questions? Yeah. 
So far, so good. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, who calls get return object? Oh. Uh, Not here, but you go back. You yeah, the get get return object. Yeah. Uh, it's is part that of part by of the runtime. Or, I mean, by the generated code, or is that? Something that it's part that. of the like. It's not here. Yeah, good point. I uh, probably should. Uh, you build coding frame, uh -huh. and uh, from uh, there you call, call get, get an object, and uh -huh. it will give you the function int something. Okay. I, did, I wrote it like uh, here like this, uh, but yeah, it, you should build coding frame, and from it the uh, result object. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, is it possible to create a coroutine if arguments are like not not copyable and not movable? That's a good question. No, no, it's not. It's not because you have to Indeed. copy the variables into the coding frame. It's not copyable. Blah blah blah. Okay. Maybe you can uh, if you take it as a reference. Then yeah, you, right. yes, but you need to uh, uh, make sure that a no, lifetime of the. <coughs> so yeah, because be I remember you can pass a socket, for example, there. Then the socket is movable, basically. But yeah. it's something movable. is you not even from. A, you move even from a const object in the parameter list. It's really weird, but that's how it works. I mean, he, if he's asking if about it's non technically possible to move an object and copy an object depending on the on the arguments, then okay. But if your object states move constructor equals delete, copy constructor equals delete, then okay, no, then you can yeah. All right, let's move on. And uh, it will run immediately, and it depends on you if there is a, uh, if the initial suspend will suspend. Otherwise, it will continue immediately. <laughs> so. We need to build pausable functions. And for that, let's look at this diagram. And we need to like implement the suspend thing in middle. And for that, uh, sometimes your function doesn't know where you want to go, like if you want to go back to color or somewhere else, or just continue, as a, as a like the, uh, definition of the uh, function. And you need to do the decision a little bit later. Here. You jump somewhere else, and be, be, uh, you, you can decide later where you want to go. You can go. Uh, you can continue. You can go somewhere else, or you can go back to color. And for that, you use no op coroutine. So if you want to go back to color, you will always return a coroutine handle from the uh, await suspend. And if you return no op coroutine, the uh, coroutine will immediately go back to color. So no op coroutine uh, can be used like with the late jump selection, which will always suspend. And uh, if you just if, if you want to just continue, you will just return a handle of current coroutine, and it will just continue. But it will uh, give you like uh, it's, there is a cost of suspension and resumption. If you want to go somewhere else, you will provide just other coroutine handle. And if you go back to, back to color, you just provide no op coroutine. And it will immediately uh, <coughs> suspend, and it will go back uh, to color. And uh, after reception, it's void. So pausable functions and no uh, coroutines. You have normal function, which is no, just normal function, uh, not like a uh, coroutine. It's just typical C++ function. And from uh, from it, you will start coroutine. You will start it. It runs, and at the end, there is a continuation no coroutine. Uh, so uh, when there is a final suspend, it will go back to color. It behaves as a function. If you, from coroutine, start another coroutine, it's exactly the same. It's just a function. At the end, it will go back. But it, uh, if you decide uh, from the coroutine, suspend, and go back to color, because uh, the first coroutine starts second coroutine, so it, it's co coroutine first is a, a color of the second one. You will go back to it, and uh, the rest of function is there. It's not destroyed. It's there for you to resume. And then you can continue, and you can resume <coughs> it. And if you coroutine uh, uh, go to the end, and there is a no up coroutine as a uh, like evator of current coroutine, it will go back to color, but this time is a function on the top. So uh, coroutine 1 will never be reached. So when you sus uh, co evate on a coroutine, you need to set in promise type of the coroutine you are evading on, the, uh, like uh, what's, what coroutine should be run after you uh, uh, finish, uh, reach the end. So you need to uh, mark that uh, the coroutine which follows, uh, it's actually the, uh, like not, not no op coroutine, but the coroutine 
which co uh, coagulating on you. So you run coroutine, it will do something, pass, and then uh, when you need a result from it, it will resume it, and then we will get the result. But actually, uh, pausing coroutines doesn't make sense. Usually, you, do, you can write the code differently, and you don't need to pause it. For myself, the only reason why uh, you want to pause coroutine is uh, you do some I/O operation or something which takes a long time, mm -hmm. or you can do multiple operations next to each other. So we need to write promise type. Promise types uh, is like <coughs> a JavaScript promise, promise, and inside is promise type like yeah. <coughs> It's, uh, it, you can construct it, you, uh, you cannot copy, uh, copy it, you can move it, uh, you can destroy it, you can assign it, and uh, you can await on it. And uh, it, will, uh, it will suspend on only if it's uh, not finished, because the re result is not yet there yet. And if it suspends, it will look at the awaiter, and it will tell promise type, someone is waiting on me, and store it somewhere in promise type. And if you... Uh, uh, if you assume it, it will che check for the exceptions. If there is an exception, it will retro it. It will give you a result if there is no exception. I believe it cannot do things like what the down slide, because you have set the your risk or in handle, and you cannot call it that promise. Uh, my handle is uh, my handle. I know its type. It's here. Yeah. It's like uh, my handle type is my. No, a way to suspend except the type risk in handle. Except that you can handle a void. A awaiter. And I'm uh, storing the awaiter inside of the uh, my, oh, my premise type. Okay, sorry. That's fine. I, I, uh, when I was doing it, I was also fine, like, uh, like confusing, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. And I know you did talk, so it's like probably I should name it differently. Anyway, so you can await on this uh, premise type because you are promising something and you could uh, await on uh, the result. And in, inside of the promise type of promise is, I'm using same uh, promise type as a function, and I'm just uh, implementing differences. I have a waiter, which is coroutine, uh, polymorphic coroutine of any type, which is awaiting on me. Initial suspend, there is a, some scheduler, which uh, when I initial suspend, I will inform, I'm starting this, uh, this promise, uh, I will get there later. But someone else needs to know I'm starting this. And I will never suspend because I will go immediately into into it in the code, and this is like a little bit different between uh, how uh, different languages work. In Python, if you do task, it will uh, start when you co-await on it. In uh, JavaScript, it's uh, kind of start immediately, uh, even if you're not waiting on it, and then uh, it pauses uh, when it's blocked. I'm going a JavaScript part. Me and Kirk, we have like differences about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of a JavaScript person. These slides are done in JavaScript. Uh, so yeah, final suspend. I have custom final suspend, uh, which uh, remembers uh, my promise type. It will always suspend. Resume, uh, it returns void. And when I suspend, I will ask schedule to uh, suspend me and select something else. And I'm giving it a hint that maybe someone is uh, awaiting on me. And I return the final suspend. And there is a function someone is wait awaiting, uh, waiting for me. is the coroutine handle. And I will store it into awaiter. And ask that you, uh, hey, choose someone else uh, to run now. Because if I'm co-awaiting, uh, I need to get some other coroutine handle to run. So I have a color of coroutine. I will start coroutine. I will run it. And then uh, I will reach some point where I need to download something or like uh, access some I.O. Then I will immediately suspend because I don't do any I.O. yet. Because no one is awaiting on the result. So I can do something else. I can continue with the color. But I will let schedule know this coroutine is blocked by I.O. I will call another coroutine, run it, again, reach some point when I need to uh, do some I.O. So I will suspend and let schedule know. Then 
I go another coroutine, and exactly the same. And now I go and take first coroutine. What will happen? Block. Yeah, all the coroutines I'm in are blocked. Coroutine one, coroutine two, coroutine three are blocked by IO, and uh, coroutine uh, on the top is blocked by a result of coroutine one. So I have four coroutines, and all four are blocked. So this time, I will ask Kajiro to uh, do some I.O. and give me something I can uh, like resume. It will do some I.O. And once something is finished, it will finish coroutine 2. But I'm not coveting on coroutine 2. Maybe. It's, it can be kind of random. Then I will ask again, OK, I need to do it again, because I'm still coveting on coroutine 1. So uh, schedule will finish maybe coroutine 1. And now I'm coveting on it. So I can run it and move on. Coroutine 1 can be destroyed in this moment. Then I'm coveting on uh, coroutine 2, which is already done. So I don't need to suspend. And I will just reach the result and destroy the uh, result. Fine. And then I'm coveting on coroutine 3, which is still not like finished. So I need to let the schedule know. Schedule will do the I.O., resume coroutine 3, res uh, which leads to resumption of first coroutine, and I'm done. The point here is I need to count uh, how many coroutines I have and how many of them are blocked. So I will go a little bit, uh, like a little, a little bit, like to, like to something else now. But we will get there. Let's have the easy easy handle perform function, which will return lazy perform object, which uh, <coughs> and you, you call it handle dot perform, wait on the result get a result. And uh, lazy perform uh, takes the reference to the easy handle from curl. It will always suspend because uh, it's never ready when you call it. And then uh, you suspend. You will associate the curl handle with current coroutine. And uh, let's schedule no. You need to be suspended, and uh, it needs to select something next. And uh, uh, yes, uh, I assume we will uh, reach for the result from the call. And you will know if it's like a successful call or not, if timeouted, whatever. So schedule. I have counter for a running task, number of coroutines I started. I have counter for block task, number of coroutines which reached point which are blocked by something else. And every time I start coroutine, I will inform about start by incrementing the number. Then. And every time I fi uh, reach final suspend point of a coroutine, I, I will get a hint for a possible next coroutine. Maybe someone is awaiting on current coroutine, which finished. And I decrement number of running tasks and select something next with the, with the hint. If someone asks me to suspend and select next, maybe, uh, uh, yeah, I'm awaiting and, uh, for uh, on the coroutine. So I'm. Uh, it means it's blocked, and I need to select something next without any hint. Select next function will uh, like take hint and return a handle. If there is a hint, I will just unblock number of coroutines and uh, run the next uh, coroutine. If it's uh, if number of running tasks and blocked are not same, I still can do something else. Someone is not coveting on me. I can go back to color one uh, one uh, like uh, one up. Because, uh, but I'm not uh, like leaving the root coroutine. I'm still inside one of uh, the root coroutine itself. So it's not ev not everything is blocked. I can continue. But if it's uh, everything is blocked, I will complete I/O and return coroutine from it, unblock it, and return completed uh, handle. The function uh, will do some I/O and return the handle. Lip curl multi API. How many people know this API? Okay, four. It's uh, like asynchronous API for uh, libcurl. You can add the handle into multi-handle, the easy handle. You can remove it from, the, from it. You can perform on <laughs> set of handles. You can uh, pull uh, until there is something uh, happening on I.O. Or you can uh, access uh, which uh, uh, like handle was finished, the easy handle which was finished. All these like five functions you need uh, to implement Cockerel.
So Phoenix uh, complete I/O is infinite loop, infinite loop, which will perform something on multi curl. And uh, when something is done, it will uh, look what handle was uh, finished, and uh, look at the associated coroutine and return its handle. So every time uh, some operation is finished, I will just uh, uh, resume it. And if not, I will pull uh, and try again, because everything is blocked, so I can block. So fetch uh, as a C++ function implementation, I will take URL, number of attempts, return string, output, create handle. I will, I will be writing into the string. I will follow redirection. There is infinite loop of if I have still number uh, some attempts left. Otherwise, I will throw ex exception. I will co await on the perform uh, or, or, the, uh, or the operation. If uh, it fail, I can assume uh, the download if I download something already, and continue. If the response code is not two hundred something, I can throw exception, and otherwise I will return the output. So uh, I can also wait on a range of promises and transform it uh, into promise of uh, like a uh, promise uh, with multiple result vector here. So I will look at the uh, value of uh, uh, of the promise of the uh, branch. I will look on the result type of the uh, uh, promises. I will materialize the promises because uh, they can be it can be a lazy a lazy view. So I actually actually need to uh, do the uh, I need to get the uh, promise type as a handle in some storage. So it, it, uh, the uh, coroutine frame must exist. So I will transform it into vector. So I materialize it. I will create vector of results uh, of the same size and go through all the uh, promises. And I will co-evaluate on the result and place uh, the result and uh, return the result, return all the uh, like what I did. This loop uh, like synchronous, but actually because uh, the uh, materialization, the arranges to create uh, start all the premises, it's the fork operation. And this loop at the end is join operation. I didn't use ranges here uh, because I need to co-await and I, uh, I need all the function to be coroutines. OK, then I can also have a range of premises which are an optional. And if some of the optionals is not, not fulfilled or is uh, failing. So uh, I will take range of uh, promises which return optional and I return op uh, promise which returns optional of vector of the result. Look at the uh, types, materialize it again, prepare the result uh, vector and uh, iterate over the result vector uh, over the temporary vector. Look at the promise, check if there is no, if it's fulfilled. If it's not, I will return null opt for all the promises. And they will get destroyed, so uh, it will they will get cancelled. And at the end, I will emplace uh, them into the output and return the output. This is again joint operation, but all needs to be optional with value. I can also do with multiple arguments and return tuple of uh, like promise with tuple. So I will take the arguments and make tuple and use fault expression collaborate on each of them, make tuple and the result uh, return the result. Again, join operation, but this time I know it's promises that I, I, know I don't need to materialize them. Mm -hmm. So everything together. One second. Uh -huh. just, just to clear, um, on the uh, ranges that have optionals in them, uh -huh. you're saying if, if, if one of them are optional, the oh, they result are. is... They all need to be optional. They all need to be optional, but if because it's a range, a range. Empty. sorry. Yeah. If one of them is empty, then <coughs> then, uh, every, uh, then a result will be empty too. That's uh, this is like all we can implement any, so we will uh, need at least one. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's, is it, that's zip on on maybe like it's the correct thing to do. Yeah, and uh, so uh, you can implement any. You can implement also uh, JavaScript to have promise dot race which will give you first uh, promise which will finish and every, everything else will be thrown away. So you can use it, use it to build like a download with timeout and whoever finish first 
or it will it will get its result and you can act on that. So everything together. You can uh, fetch this file and this file and wrap them into one big promise, co-await on it, you do structure binding and print the result. And it will print hello world. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can download files or like uh, fetch all from the URL, <coughs> fetch the URL, the page, look with CTRE uh, search uh, for all the absolute URLs in it, transform them with fetch resource. That's the reason I needed to materialize them because it's a lazy view. So I will transform all the URLs into uh, premises from the fetch resource. Fetch resource will take URL and return a resource object with the URL itself and uh, content, which will download and collaborate on it. And uh, when everything is downloaded, I will collaborate on it and return the result. And you will get a promise uh, of vector of resources. So maybe you downloaded all <laughs> images from a page. Or uh, you, like, you have like crawler for the search engine, which will actually crawl on a like, web page you are actually indexing mm -hmm. in C++. So the search engine I showed you at first is search for text, number of results you are looking for, and it will give you promise with document with count. You will look for the text, you will, uh, look, uh, uh, you will get a sliding window of three characters uh, of it, and you will also get position with the enumerate. So we'll have like position zero and three characters, position one, next uh, three characters, like three characters. It's like sliding window. It's, it's not like every three windows. Then you will uh, t uh, look at the, all the engrams you got. You will transform them with fetch engram function, which will just uh, download them from somewhere from index and shift them by position in the, uh, in the input. Because you will get uh, the index uh, contains all the uh, number of documents uh, where the uh, occurrence is, is and what position it is, and uh, you shift the position by the uh, uh, you negatively shift uh, the uh, position from the input with the result. So if uh, ngram x y z start at uh, second position, the start of uh, against the text is minus one. So, then you will sort the engrams based on the size because you want to do it from the smaller set because you are calculating intersection. Then you will fold uh, fold them. The operation with index intersect uh, operation which just uh, calculate intersection set intersection. And then you will fold them again and, uh, because you you got a list of documents and all occurrences and you actually don't care about all occurrences. You actually. Uh, care about number of documents and uh, number, uh, number of occurrences. So you redu reduce them by, uh, they are sorted by ID, so you re reduce them. You will uh, do partial sort of the result and you will get top uh, 100 results of documents which contains the, that text. And it will download only pieces you need to actually do the operation and not the whole index. And so what we are waiting for? The library is here. You can play with it. And the search engine for draft is draft cpp fail, and for reference is ref cpp fail. And we have time for questions. Thank you. <laughs> Do I have any questions? Uh, when you were, oh, it's about halfway through, I didn't catch any slide numbers. Um, if you are adding um, another co is it possible to add that several, are you, is it possible to add several co um, um Sorry, not co the uh, co-weightable objects in there. And then, is there any sort of event that You can, uh, uh, it's, uh, I, uh, it was also at the start, and it behaves the same as in JavaScript. So, uh, um, Uh, you can do uh, like promise all combination if you want, but also you can do uh, something like this. You can fetch two uh, two documents and co-await on them, 
And because everything is blocked, fetch uh, is blocked internally. Second, also, it will do the uh, download of the file even if you're not uh, awaiting on it. So this is operation. This is also like uh, fork and join, but uh, right. not like not explicitly. Thank you. Yeah. Chandler, you have a question? No, you raised your hand. I wanted you to go to the, 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 the last slide of code for the search thing and just leave it up for longer. OK. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. I couldn't get through it as fast as you did. OK. That's totally understandable. So, yeah, it's beautiful code, by the way. It's, I, I love this algorithm. So, you just uh, get all the occurrences intersect them and it's as beautiful as it gets, I think. Meanwhile, and well, everybody's digesting that. I just have a dumb question. Uh -huh. What's the difference between the two websites, the draft and the... Yeah, uh, DRF is for C++ reference, if you are more like a user, and uh, draft is for C++ draft. Oh, I see, it's uh, CPP reference is what you're... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I see. And if you uh, if you are LLVM developer, you can do LLVM dot cpp dot fail. Oh, and okay. if you are Carbon developer, you can do Carbon dot uh, cpp dot fail. But uh, it's yeah. Oh, thank you. It's temporary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not coroutine related, but I'm super curious about what an ngram set is and what the intersection of the shards okay, uh, means. Okay. Uh, 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 right in the middle there. Calculate intersection. Okay, uh, the engram, uh, each uh, like uh, you will get engrams for like uh, you are searching for uh, let's say Hana. It's four letters, and you will get three engram, two, two engrams, H A N and N uh, A N A. So you have like a sliding window of three characters. That's the that's the engram okay. here, and uh, that, that uh, the adjacent transform will give you view of like sliding windows of characters. And enumerate, uh, it will uh, give you also position to it. So we'll get zero and gram. So H -A -N, uh, position zero, it's H N. And position one is N A N A. Then it's like uh, it's a tuple. So it's like tuple of the position and the uh, engram. Then uh, you will transform uh, the engrams uh, with uh, like function, which will do uh, fetch engram. We'll just download them. Maybe some JSON and do parsing or whatever. And shift them because you have the position, like uh, of the like uh, what you asked, and uh, in the uh, index you have a list of all, all documents, where are like num numbers, let's say, and a position inside of the document. Position like uh, this engram is on on fourth position, but if I'm looking for it, it's actually uh, my second engram, so I will uh, uh, like uh, decrement it by one. So I will look if uh, if it's part of my uh, what I'm looking for, it, it should start at the position what I'm looking for. So uh, they will like they will get all normalized to same position, and then I can sort them by size because I'm doing intersection, and then uh, the index intersection will just look at the number of documents and positions on each each leaf of the index, and if you get for each uh, if you get same hit. In each uh, uh, all the leaves you are searching, you found your occurrence. Uh, that way, you will get a list of your occurrences, documents, and position where your occurrence is start. But you don't care about uh, the occurrence itself, like uh, how many times it one document is, usually. So you will uh, do something like a uh, group by, which is this. You will group them, and uh, instead of position, you are uh, looking for a uh, num number of uh, like count counts of the in, in each document. And then you can sort the documents by uh, the uh, number of uh, hits, partial sort because you don't need to do for only like for top hundred, and ret return the result. And you will and you this is how like full text engine uh, works. Chandler should know he's working in Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is roughly how it works, yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. It, it's it's very pretty. I've uh, seen the Google search code, it looks just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> especially the especially the partial sort where it looks exactly like that. 
<clears throat> the the order by number of occurrences especially looks exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful algorithm. It's it's beautiful for exactly what you built, and it's wonderfully simple. I love it. Yeah, um, yeah, but Any it cannot questions? handle large corpuses at all. Right. Yeah. Uh, you need like some optimizations, and yeah, it, it's not really about optimization. You're going to need a better ranking function, and then you get Google. It's, I was just joking. <laughs> I mean, it's slideware. It's great. Yeah, yeah no, it's slideware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I implement this also in JavaScript, and that's the version on the uh, web page you can use. And yeah, I'm uh, doing uh, giving this search uh, thingy uh, to Chandler to for carbon. So I'm actually giving search engine to Google. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.